Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at how Roberto De Zerbi is evolving the football meta in Tats Explained. Remember to subscribe if you're new and check out Sofa Score. But anyway, let's get this party started. Recently, Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp have dominated the Premier League, and despite deploying very different styles, both managers have revolutionised the game in their own right. Guardiola with his possession-heavy focused tiki-taka, and Klopp with his heavy metal football, with a big focus on pressing from the front and the first pass being forward. Despite big differences in approach and tempo, both Guardiola and Klopp have dominated possession with a similar 4-3-3 starting shape that first transitioned to a 2-3-5 and then a slight variation to a 3-2-5 that offered even greater control to the team in possession. Despite the nuances in roles and personnel, both teams build with five players and attack with five players and have reasonably clear attacking and defensive units. Both teams have been excellent and both coaches have inspired others to evolve further to a point where their rivals have reeled them in and are no longer as dominant as they once were. But with Roberto De Zerbi, we could finally be seeing the next evolution of the football meta. Roberto De Zerbi has a very clear footballing philosophy. His style is probably best described as high risk high reward possession football. A former professional footballer, De Zerbi, didn't quite hit the heights that he might have hoped for, but he had a solid career nonetheless, winning the double with Romanian side Cluj. After retiring in 2013, De Zerbi got straight into management, starting in Serie D with Boario and then working his way up Serie A via Foggia, Palermo, Benevento and finally Sassuolo. De Zerbi won plaudits for his work with the Black and Greens, guiding them to back-to-back 8th -back place finishes and generally overachieving whilst playing exciting possession-based football. In fact, De Zerbi guided Sassuolo to the best ever Serie A points total in their history in his final season at the club. De Zerbi then moved on again to Shakhtar Donetsk, implementing his brilliant style of exciting football before the invasion of the Ukraine halted football in the country. Generally setting up in a 4-2-3-1, De Zerbi wants to dominate the ball. He instructs his teams to build out from the back, inviting pressure from the opposition by slowing the tempo or dwelling on the ball. This creates space in advanced areas which De Zerbi's teams exploit by playing through the pressure with combination play and creating faux counter-attacking situations. This is De Zerbi ball at its core. Following Graham Potter's move to Chelsea, Brighton moved quickly to secure De Zerbi and tied the Italian down to a four-year contract. Despite his slow start at Chelsea, Potter revolutionised the Seagulls with building out from the back, fluid formations and attacking football. Initially, De Zerbi came in and continued with Potter's formation and style, but since the World Cup, De Zerbi has changed the meta of football with his innovative use of six players to build attacks. The difference in this style is summed up well by Brighton's own Alexis McAllister, who said, I drop deeper under Roberto because he wants us to build from the back and when they press, try to move the ball quickly to goal. So maybe we play deeper to attract the pressure and then counter. So what has De Zerbi changed? In possession, Brighton build out from the back in a 2-4-2-2 system. A key concept of their possession game is the use of boxes. Brighton have two distinct boxes. The deepest box is made up of the centre backs and the defensive midfielders, and the advanced box is made up of the defensive midfielders, the number 10 and the striker. These boxes allow Brighton to constantly dominate the centre of the pitch, which gives De Zerbi the control he desires. In fact, since the World Cup, no team in the Premier League has more league games with 70% possession or more than the Seagulls. Boxes are becoming more popular in modern football as teams evolve from single pivot structures, but we've mostly seen them used to overload the midfield. Generally, they overload the first line of pressure, which creates problems for the opposition. If they continue with the same pressing structure, the box will easily play around the pressure. But if they commit more players to the press, space is created in the advanced areas that can be exploited by the attackers. Brighton's back six is crucial to De Zerbi's philosophy, and it goes hand in hand with the players at the club, as dynamic wingers, Matoma and March, thrive when given this kind of space to play in, whilst the likes of Lewis Dunk, Pascal Gross, Moises Kai Sado and Alexis McAllister all have the quality to play through pressure. This build-up shape means that if the opposition match Brighton's deep box, they have to commit four players to the press to go man for man with the two centre-backs and two midfielders. The problem here is that De Zerbi has ways to combat this disruption. 
The goalkeeper gets involved in the build-up and can split the centre-backs, creating a 3-4 that separates the pressers. The striker or the attacking midfielder can drop in to overload this area. A full-back, often the right-back, will invert, creating an out-ball and a new passing angle that can be used to progress the play. Because of the narrowness of the box, space is often left out wide, which means Brighton can also play wide to the full-back and look to progress through the wide areas. And finally, they can always go direct to the forwards, either hitting flat passes into attacking midfield or playing diagonal switches into the wingers. In reality, teams don't commit that many to stop Brighton's builder because A, they are so proficient that they can still play through the intense pressure and B, if their press is bypassed, then their defenders are extremely exposed. So generally, Brighton have a 63 in their own third during build-up, allowing them to take these players out of the game with ease through simple progressive passes, allowing De Zerbi ball to swing into action. A big reason why De Zerbi's style has been so effective so quickly has been the fact that Brighton are basically building with six outfielders, which goes against most tactical trends. The most popular has been to build either in a 3-2 or a 2-3 base. So pressing schemes are designed to stop five outfielders but De Zerbi 6 creates a natural overload, allowing for easy ball retention and progression. And Brighton's proficiency is backed up by the stats. Per 90 in the Premier League this season, De Zerbi's men actually rank first for build-ups and are completing 85% more 10-plus pass sequences than under Graham Potter. This allows Brighton to progress the ball through the thirds, usually seeing numerically equal attacks like 4v4s or 5v5s. With Brighton's quality in the wide areas with Solly March and Toma, Brighton have scored more goals per game in the Premier League than anyone else since the World Cup, despite losing their top score in January. And this is the real benefit of building with six players easy progression to their forwards. So why could this shape become the new footballing meta? First, it's incredibly difficult to stop using traditional systems. If we match up with the most popular defensive shape before 4-4-2, De Zerbi's system can go man for man all over the pitch. But that would mean two centre-backs would be tracking the attacking midfielder and striker who drop deeper than the wingers, thus creating massive space for the wingers to attack from the outside to in. If they press in a 4-3-3, then you've got massive problems controlling Brighton's wing-backs, making progression out wide very simple. Alternatively, if you commit high onto the wing-back, then you leave space for the wingers and potentially a 4v3 on your defence, creating both a numerical and qualitative overload with a centre-back back up against a dynamic winger. A 4-5-1 leaves an overload in the deep block and a 2v1 in the defensive midfield area with a striker and attacking midfielder. Even if a team had the personnel to leave the forwards in a man-to-man -man scheme by building out from the 18-yard box, De Zerbi's system will always use the goalkeeper as an extra outfielder, outnumbering the press 11v10 and thus all was leaving a spare man. If building with six players becomes the meta, teams could adopt these two approaches. Number one, defending in a 3-5-2 shape, pressing the back six man-to-man -man with the two forwards, central midfielders and wing-backs. However, this comes at a risk, as your defensive midfielder has to cover two players. But this risk could be reduced by squeezing the pitch and the defensive midfielder picking up the near-side attacking midfielder, one of the centre-backs picking up the other. You would also have to play full-backs as outside centre-backs to reduce the qualitative overload that the wingers would have. Number two is one that Pep Guardiola used effectively against Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea. Pressing in a narrow 4-2-3-1 and completely collapsing over to one side of the pitch, with the far side attacking midfielder picking up the far side defensive midfielder. This will be very vulnerable to a switch of play and thus require a very mobile and physically fit side. Alternatively, you could try and not press and sit in a mid-block, completely giving up possession. However, Brighton have been combating this by coaxing teams out, inviting pressure in the middle third but working the ball towards their own goal, ultimately creating space for their attackers. Leicester City tried this approach and managed a 2-2 draw, but created very little whilst Brighton missed all of their three big chances. Roberto De Zerbi is doing a fantastic job at Brighton and is asking new questions of effective defensive structures in the Premier League. Teams have struggled in the build-up phase of their games this season, as aggressive pressing structures have become the norm. But by adopting De Zerbi's 2-4-2-2, Football meta could change once again. But anyway, guys, what do you think? Will Deserby's back six become the football meta? Let me know in the comments below. Check out Sofa Score, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?